Hey guys, so I've got a problem for us here. I want you to find the tension in the rope when the ball is at its lowest point. So imagine I've got a ball that I kind of wound up to here and then let it go in a pendulum motion and started swinging like this. And the rope that attached the ball to the ceiling was five meters long. The ball weighed two kilograms and at its lowest point, it was going six meters per second this way. And I just wanna know what is the tension in the rope when the ball is at this point here, at its lowest point. So we know tension is just a force applied to a string or a rope. And since it's a force, we know it's gonna be equal to mass times acceleration. So we already know the mass, right? We already know it's two kilograms, so we can include that here. But we don't know the acceleration, right? That's the tricky part. You might guess that, okay, of course, gravity is gonna always be acting straight down uh, gravitational acceleration, but there's also something else we need to account for here. And it's the reason why the tension isn't as high here as it is here. Imagine you're at a swing set at a park. When you're sort of wound up to the, to the back of the swing and you're getting ready to swing down, you feel almost weightless right here, don't you? But then when you get to the bottom, when you're at the lowest point, you feel very heavy, almost as if you're being pulled down into your seat. And that's because of something called centripetal acceleration, also known as radial acceleration. And it's expressed with velocity squared over radius of the circle that you're moving in. In this case, we have a partial circle. Centripetal acceleration applies whenever you're moving in a circle or a partial circle. The example I like to use is a roller coaster. So when you get to the bottom of a roller coaster loop, you feel very heavy in your seat, just like on that swing set. And that's because not only is gravity pulling you down, but something called centripetal acceleration is also pulling you straight down because centripetal acceleration always acts directly out of a circle. And when you get to the top of a roller coaster loop, you feel nearly weightless. And this is because, again, gravity is acting straight down, but this time centripetal acceleration is acting straight up because it's, it always acts directly out of the circle. And at this point, centripetal acceleration and gravity oppose each other. They almost cancel each other out. And that's why you feel weightless. You know, if this roller coaster were to stop right here, you would have no more centripetal acceleration because you would no longer be moving in a circle. Gravity would take over, and unless you were properly secured in your seat, you could fall out. That's why centripetal acceleration is so important in the calculation and the engineering of making a roller coaster. So back to our problem, we know we're moving in sort of a partial circle here like this, right? So centripetal acceleration at this point is gonna be acting straight out of that circle, right? So I'll abbreviate centripetal acceleration, CA. So now we know for our acceleration, we actually have to add together gravity and centripetal acceleration to account for this. So gravity we know is always gonna be 9.8 meters per second squared, but centripetal acceleration, we have to calculate with this expression velocity squared over radius of the circle or partial circle. So we know velocity is six meters per second, right? So we'll have six squared over the radius of this partial circle, which is five, right? So our gravity is 9.8 and our centripetal acceleration is 36 over five. So now we can add those in to our acceleration variable here. So I'll add together 9.8 meters per second squared plus 36 over five meters per second squared. These are both in units of meters per second squared or acceleration. And when you multiply those out on your calculator, you should get 34 and this is in units of Newtons because it is a force. So I hope that made sense. If you guys are interested in any tutoring or have any questions, please contact me at facebook.com slash tutoring. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot.